Pacific. Uh, I'll talk about these in a bit. Basically, my main interest is how to find a spinnaker, and uh, um, given the 20 minute, I will probably present only one or two that we have here. We have more. Well, many of us have already spoken about the guitar spinnaker. It's a uh, home dependent interaction, exactly global. It's a genius spinnaker. Despite it's in there too, it has the capitalist uh, expectations which are my own. So that's why this is exciting. Um, not only just that the uh, is exciting, it also gives us an angle to look at the different uh, perspective to the frustrating magnetism. Because uh, so far we've been thinking about geometrical frustration, but instead of having a geometrical frustration, and one can get this in the game on a fiber type bodies, if one has a bone dependent interactions, which are basically Isaac models in each bone, but because it's different uh, direction on dependence, it is frustrating as such. And uh, once that happens, then the uh, emergent particles of years, which are my run in this case, and on the magnetic field that we call non aliens and one can use for the whole scope of computations and so on. And that's why this actually carried the entropy from this Maranus. And it was uh, sort of discussed by the original author, Kaev, that the energy current is going to be quantized. There will be a T sphere where the temperature here. So kappa divided by T, which is a thermal conductivity, will be quantized. And that's coming from the fact that once you apply the magnetic field in the isotropic detailed model, there will be a gap in the bulk, but the uh, capitalist expectations of first on the boundary, and that gives us the uh, finite dollar whole conductivity. Okay, so the real question, which uh, we probably have to think about, is that where to find that basically? Okay, so that's a nice model, uh, but uh, what we can realize in the solid state material is not that trivial at all. And the progress has been made by uh, this lovely paper by uh, Zekli and Pagoe has suggested that the, if uh, you have uh, strong spin on decouplings in the T to G orbitals, then one can generate the G effective half, and uh, if you will work on the NG, uh, the 90 degree super exchange process, then the Heisenberg become is cancels out, and you only end up with the uh, bone dependent interaction, which is inherently is negative. So there is a ferromagnetic effect, which is proportional to the wound coupling between the PPG. And then the R here is the intermediate or the indirect coping through the uh, options or chlorine, the orbitals in the middle of this pass. Okay, the experimentally, and then they suggest that probably one can look at the uh, sodium uh, 3 more 4 but experimentally, this is an insulator with what it has an magnetic order of the 50 Kelvin, and it know that the continuum primary also has a magnetic order. So we do know that the uh, is not a single term in the real solid state materials. So how we can think about this? So the derivation of the steam model that occurred in 2014, so Fact, but I decided to go through this little vector to give you the idea of uh, uh, where to get the positive detail, where to get the negative detail, how big is the detail, how big is the gamma, so what happens uh, and once you have such a word of internals. So you have the infusion of because, and this is basically honeycomb, and going through the intermediate of the place, which is option setting. So T2 here is the um, the uh, indirect coping and T1 and T3 are two different kinds of the direct coping and that of course you know, this one is a Z bone for example and this is X and this is YZ and that's why you can draw the pictures and then work it out to some numbers. So here, this is a coping parameter and uh, this is written in a T2G orbital basis, the so YZ and X T and XY and diagonal part is the direct coping and the T2 is the indirect coping through the options or PODs. So if I don't have this direct coping, which is the T1 and T1 and T3, then we end up with the uh, detailed interactions. So this is uh, the minimal model, you know, ideal polygon. Here is neighbor, we have three comes here. And J here is the Heisenberg, only coming from the direct coping. You can see that it does have 
P2, the only at P1 and P3, which are the direct coping between the D orbitals. In fact, from here, if I don't have direct coping here, as I said, it's negative. It's coming from an indirect coping from the oxygen or T orbitals from chlorines, and it's going to be negative. And, but once I have the direct coping, the direct coping will come into the place, and one can change the sign depending on whether indirect coping is dominant or direct coping is dominant. The gamma term is actually quite interesting because it is a product of the two. So if I have an indirect coping and direct coping, it comes as a product of the direct and indirect coping. So if I have a, only an indirect coping, then I only have a defect term, which is negative defect. But once we have the host indirect and the direct coping, they will have K gamma J all together. Now I might say that well, this comes in the PL minus P3, well, they might cancel, and that's the word that the alloy and they miss the thumb because they thought that T1 is equal to T3. But in fact, the T1 and T3 comes a different sign and they add up. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is in fact a not that small and you multiply the two uh, and that will give you the gamma term in one bone uh, and the Heisenberg term here, if you look at it, it comes to the T1 plus to T3, so they actually can slow. There's a way that they can be canceled out and this all comes to the positive. So it's uh, rather rough think of all the risk of this that are very high So that's the uh, minimum model that one can work on in the, uh, the ideal to be So what about the base uh, diagram? So this is a classical base diagram. Uh, we have parameterized, uh, just uh, following the following uh, way of doing it. So here, JK gamma is written in terms of angle. So this is the cosine theta is the gamma. And we are choosing the theta from 0 to pi by 2 here. So we are only taking the gamma positive. There is a base diagram for the gamma negative. But I won't discuss that because it's more relevant for the gamma to be positive. Negative is a little bit more, uh, it's more, uh, it's not that interesting. In a sense that you've got a lot to hold the stick. So here the uh, gamma is, the uh, whole gamma only is the, well, it's So this is the last uh, one here. This is the gamma only. And then the setup goes uh, all the way to pi by 2, which is the boundary here. So that will be a whole entire Heisenberg of the, 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 the model uh, calculation. And the last model will give you the anti-ferromagnet. And then ferromagnet, obviously. This is a positive J. This is negative J. This is a decay point. And this is a negative decay point. And there are certain hidden S2 points fact that occurs in the one point in the zigzag, one point in the 120. 120 has the another S2 point through the six side transformation. And 120 is nothing but the 120 between this triangle. So this triangle out of the honeycomb will make 120 order. And the other triangle will make another 120 order. And how they depending how well the magnetic moment uh, aligns depending on the uh, the moment directions, which is a little bit uh, one has to be about the quantum quantations and so on. But in any case, it's all the state here. And there is a zigzag here, and there is a stripy phase, which is just a different type of other state. And then zigzag is somehow hits in here, and then this you know, kind of uh, survives all the way here. This one is also interesting. In a classical model, this is an incommensurate spiral orders. And the spiral uh, incommensurate wave vector changes as you go along the uh, inside the face, it becomes a bigger as I move towards the boundaries. So that's the classical model. Once you have a classical model, you might think, okay, I'm looking for a spin -nicket. So where are the best place to look for the spin -nicket? is one point here, because there are three phases linked together. There's a type point. We know that it's exactly so cool, but even without knowing that, we know that this is something interesting. And there's a one point here where another whole face meet. And this is also interesting because the uh, uh, Incommensurate spiral, when you add a compound, it becomes unclear what happens. Another thing that's also interesting is the line of this here, which is the, in a sense that gamma to the K is all going along the two different bases. So, what we decided to look at it is the Kenny Postai quantum model, and this is the difference between classical and quantum model. We will see that, okay, so here is the entire, whether it's a positive, or negative, it doesn't matter, if 
is extremely, extremely narrow. Please follow me. So where do you find this in the game? And that's the question. And the, uh, you can see that in this development point here is uh, no longer a uh, meeting. There's something going on here. We are not able to you know, to determine whether this is or not because we are not meaning that there is a zigzag correlation within the clinical site in the calculation. And this means there is some kind of spiral correlation, but within the size of this that we were not able to determine whether this has a total behavior or there were just types of correlations. What we know is that the correlation lines in this gamma only limits is extremely short, just like the entire point. So in the relevant material issues, I mean, most of the materials are sitting in here. Uh, and uh, that's uh, uh, sort of the uh, calculation that has been provided by any of us. And uh, here's the neighbor, the one from the head, for the neighbor comes, and so on. But what's uh, most uh, disappointing is that the impact uh, here is going to be this Indian narrow range of impact. So we're talking about just all the state. So what's the, so then the question is, OK, what can we do next? All right, and uh, before I'm talking about how to think about the work to find this in the uh, let me tell you about burial progress in 2014, which was uh, done by them in the, uh, in the audience, and uh, Yang Jun Kim, who was a former supervisor of them, and uh, this is a very good collaboration between the experiment and theoretical work uh, in Toronto. Now, we've been thinking about how can extend this uh, materials uh, outside the agency. One of the things that we have realized that well, we can just use alpha routine in Quran 3 because uh, it has the right structures and so on. So we propose that this has to be, and it's a very good insulator, that's the whole thing. Uh, and at that point, when we were proposing this, we were not sure if there's a magnetic order or not, but then we have to extend it to see if the magnetic order appears or not. So this was a proposed, and uh, what we were kind of uh, Concerned about is that it's a coding material. Uh, Iridium is a 477 atomic number, while the ruthenium is 44. So, number wise, atomic is very, very different. If you look at atomic spin of recoupling strings, Iridium is about 400 and it is 500 and it is, while the ruthenium is over 100. It's 100 and it is 150 and it is. So, the difference between the two is a factor of three. So, how I can, you know, the uh, think about how this can be applied because I do need a JPP half rather than pure spin. Uh, so we look up the uh, some algebraic calculations and see if uh, I can think of how we can generate the large spin recoupling. And the uh, reason for doing that is the fact that this is a honeycomb lattice uh, and that gave us the the bandwidth of the the uh, band. I mean the JPP half or the half is in fact, very narrow. So in other words, when I'm thinking about the spin of recoupling, it's not an absolute magnitude of the energy scale. What I need is the energy scale of the spin of recoupling versus the bandwidth, and then the public interaction. So what happened here is the bandwidth is narrow enough that the spin of recoupling is uh, already effective, and that's the this picture here, which is just adding up. Uh, this picture here, adding up, this is the uh, width of all that thing. You know, if you add this, you know, something, all that is pretty narrow. And then if you add a uh, power uh, interaction u, then the u enhances the effective signal recoupling, and you can see that the effective half rotate around the chemical potential. So that was uh, where we suggest that this has to be a related to a kind of uh, 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 magnetic. This is a magnetic holistic. The way that we have to calculate here is that uh, this one, if you add a U, immediately magnetized. So we have to force the system not to be in magnetic order. So in other words, we just put it in a non-magnetic state and see the effect of the uh, flow interaction. So then flow interaction ends the spinal recoupling, and that's a very effective map to be a relevant uh, basis to begin with. All right, the other hand is again magnetic of the orders. As a zigzag order, uh, uh, Jennifer has done this work in 2015, and uh, specifically it is uh, showing in here, which is about 7 calvin, and then Newton was on it and showed the zigzag orders and so on. So, even in the idea of, uh, even in a minimal near stable model, which is the type and the gamma and J, we found that the all that would state, so the 
the real question is that, okay, where do we find this connection? So the question that I start hasn't been answered yet, and uh, I'm trying to see the direction to think about uh, where to go. So this is a list of proposed parameters set uh, in 2017 by Matthias Group. Uh, if I'm missing you here, it's not my fault. It's uh, Matthias who did it, so you can blame him. Uh, and after that, 2017, I'm sure that there are many others has been, uh, has been proposed. Uh, most of this is the DFT press to some few of you mentioned. A uh, couple of them is mine, I don't know which. Uh, but, uh, if you look at the alpha routine writing, there is a certain, um, what do I call it, a common behavior that has been found by many people here, except this one, I guess. This is the defect to be positive, and this is pinned to the neutron stepping data. And uh, if you look at the whole other here, you will see that the uh, defect interaction is negative, and uh, that means that uh, most likely indirect voting the fuel we call dominate the process. This sort of makes sense because the chlorine is a uh, nebulizer and uh, the gamma pump is positive, which also makes sense because uh, the product of the direct and direct openings will be a positive gamma. So this uh, problem, I would think, the underlying physics is the where the pipe is negative and gamma is positive, but they are comparable in terms of energy. So the question is, okay, these are the last energy scale problem. Now I can add uh, gamma prime or J3, whichever, and I can end up with some kind of a or the state. Uh, and that has been already known that I can add the prime of distortion, and I can end up with zigzag order. I can add the J3, and then we'll end up with the zigzag order, which was also done by the uh, and others. Uh, so the real question I have here is that, okay, so now I know that if I have a few people, Narrow, but luckily it's not a point, which is already good enough to some others, but it's only a very, very narrow range and it probably is extremely difficult to achieve it. But on the other hand, if I have this gamma here, if I have gamma, this model does that support the spin naked. I don't know if you think that's spin naked, but at least does it support the spin naked. So that's the question. And I'm going to look it up uh, back to our old model. So the question is here, because uh, this uh, uh, question mark here, as I said, that these are the older states. It's very well nice order. It's hard to break it. This line here has the uh, phase boundary behavior too. This part here has become unclear because uh, we don't find any local in any order. But we have some correlations with some up. So the, is that a wide regime of the specific that I begin here? And then if I add a J3 where I've got my prime, I end up with magnetic order state. Or if I add a magnetic field, I kill that. And then it will stay because the API gamma primes are small, and that small pumps will generate the water state. And if I fill the magnetic, uh, the those ones with a magnetic field, I end up with this underlying phase. And the question is, what is the underlying phase before I even add a magnetic field? I don't think we have we have been answered that question yet. So we are going to look at this again and see what kind of uh, phase we have. So that's the, that's the line that I'm going to look it up. And uh, what we are finding, this was uh, done by my student, Andre Kachmir. And so what we decided to look at here is just that this along these lines, and I'm starting from minus k to plus k. So we are just looking at the phase diagram along that lines. And as you see that this theta here is the peak here, which is the phase transition. So theta is extremely unstable. It immediately is stabilized and then end up with something that's the question mark, which is all the way all the way here. One penny is the SQ2, there's a hidden SQ2, so we know that this is exactly the whole point that's set you know, here, three color pi, and so that's all the state. Uh, the, and if you look at the static structure factors, we know that there's something going on along that lines, and that's the, what we want to take a look at. So we were not able to answer the whole question. Uh, what we have found is that in reality, as uh, also we have seen it from the previous talks, that the, in fact these bones are not totally isotropic. So they will generate an isotropy between the bone. And that's nice because the reason for the DPIF to be unstable with respect to either gamma or J is a gapless spinning. So you have gapless spinning, the instability appears quite uh, generally. 
But on the other hand, if I add a little bit of one isotropy, I can probably map off the spin limit, and then I can probably stabilize the sort of the spin limit, although uh, it's unclear whether that's a uh, um, effect or it has another value and so on, that we probably need further discussions and further studies. But at least adding on isotropy at one point, uh, say that I have made a KZ pretty slightly stronger than XY1. Of course, in reality, if I add a KX, KY different, gamma will be also different, but that is not going to change the physics. So I'm going to stay with the simplest possible. If I have only the defect to be on isotropy, what we found here is that from the minus k to gamma, because these are all the states, we will get the rest of them. This phase transition that we've seen it, it really disappears in a certain on isotropy. So this is the defect and limit, which has just a little bit of an isotropy, is continuously connected to the gamma. I say that this is within the 24 side uh, in the calculation. So we may have missed the some other state, which is beyond the 24 side, which can be difficult to answer. And this is a static structure vectors, and this is all the state that I talk about here, which we have in the Nordic. And you can see that these are all kind of star shapes and other things that are seen in here, the nano and iso things. These are the pure, uh, the normal uh, pure quantum state calculation, where they see the double picks. These are the effect. In the case of the time you have a specific which shows the two double picks, one coming from the Vibrana sex stations and the other is the G2 clock sex stations. And that double picks are sort of shrink here in the gamma only plot, which is the uh, this one here. But you still see the double picks, and that means there is a raised your entropy lag Okay, so there's something going on which I think that this is a sort of a supporting argument that there is a liquid which is sort of connected to the device. And uh, uh, I don't have time to go through this, uh, but this is not too much on this talk anyway, so we will discuss that tomorrow. And uh, I think I'm so excited to see that this part, which has this phone ties, uh, conductivity to the thermal conductivity, uh, whole thermal whole conductivity proposed by the time earlier. And uh, so here's my uh, uh, last uh, slide, uh, which I like to always end up with open questions. There are so many, many open questions. And, uh, I think that uh, I'm, I'm hoping to believe that the opinion for IP has the underlying significance, which probably you know, I have to look for it still, but I believe that that's the case. And uh, doping is one thing which is extremely interesting because one can probably generate some kind of topological superconductor. It's just uncommonized. So even I have some simple ideas about how the end of the like interesting gate, which is already interesting enough. And then magnetic field is used. This is the ovoid thing. And 3D versions that we probably want to build up the new materials. And uh, strain induced to phase transitions. Uh, pressure and strain is another thing that we want to look at. It. New material is another you know, open question that we like to understand. So, with that, uh, I'd like to thank your attention.
much sure. Yeah. So it's possible that there's cost gaps which are very tiny, and that's why that this balance and so on is you know, enough to destroy. I believe that. Yeah. So, but then how you can make that big? That's uh, you're saying that's my problem. <laughs> Thank you. 